Well, good morning, everybody. It is November 14th. It's a beautiful Saturday morning for November 14th, uh, mid-40s. Sun's just coming up over the horizon. And Dan and I are at a spot that we finished up last week. It's a very small cabin site that uh, coughed up a bunch of buttons for me, him, Lee, and Drew. And if you're going, well, Bri, I didn't see that. It's because I didn't record any of last week's videos. Uh, we spent eight hours tromping through the woods at these bigger sites that have been beat to death. And then coming back this way through a different trail, we come across a couple of very low uh, walls in an open area with a stack of stones. And we went, bingo. And in an hour, I think all four of us probably got a dozen or so buttons out of here. So let's take a look at the site. Um, we'll take a look at what I dug last week since I didn't get it uh, on video. And then we'll get today's dig started. All right, so here's the trail coming down, and right along here you can see the beginning of a very low wall, and then down on the bottom there is another part of a very low wall, and it's tough to see, but right in that area there is a stack of stones where there was a cabin site, and it's all cleaned out and open in here, and even farther down the corner, and supposedly this road has been used for, I will just say hundreds of years, because I don't want to give away the location. So this is where we're going to come back to. We'll see what we're going to do. Dan's going to holler if he gets any uh, really good tones here because there's a good chance that this could be an earlier uh, site. We know it's been cherry picked since all we got was buttons, but you never know. There's a lot of Mount Laurel to work. Um, I'm running the MXT as usual because I love the machine. I put my D2 coil on it that I took off the V3i. Let's get started. All right, I am literally on top of the uh, stone pile here on this cabin site. Good morning sunshine. And I got a pretty heavy duty signal. I knew it was going to be iron. And it was. And that hole at the base of that tree. That's pretty heavy duty. I'm guessing maybe an early early iron. Something they would set on a stove or in a fire and then press the clothes out. See it's got some kind of lines on it. And it's pretty heavy duty. That's like five pounds. See what else today brings. I want to get a little something better than that. All right. I haven't been uh, more than a couple feet away, about two or three minutes since I dug that big iron piece. And I was getting a good repeatable tone. It really wasn't that high. It was in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and uh, I got some dirt off and uh, bango, out came today's bingo. And there she is. Get the sunlight. I'm on the board with a large scent. I apologize for the wind. It's going to be like this today. Uh, Dan says classic head. If I can get the phone to focus, it's a little crusty. We'll let it dry up and we'll uh, we'll take a look at it. But I am literally, if you can see, in the stone pile here on top of this uh, on top of this cabin site. And despite four of us banging it up, somebody missed something. All right, literally right there is where I just dug that coin from and I walked to this spot and listen to that <laughs> that's a loud one I'm gonna do a live dig on this one
Hier ist die Coin. Left facing bust. Don't see it until I get it cleaned up. There's another AG in my collection. And when you get to these pounded out sites, you know I got lucky with uh, two coppers right at the hole. Then you gotta get into these areas that nobody else wants to detect in, and I've been in here about 15 minutes. Nothing yet, but. But you gotta do sometimes. And what I'm doing is in the Mountain Laurel Express. Well, this place is quiet. I know we came in here and beat up all the buttons last week. Um, but targets are slow. I'll have to check in with Dan, see if he's having any luck. I haven't dug anything other than that stove or that iron and those two coins. But I promised we'd look at last week's find, so let's do last week's review right now. And there's the lineup. I got two and a half Tombacks, and that's a plain one there. The Tombacks really nice. It's got some uh, scalloping around the edges. Very thick one too. It's got some strange discoloration. I don't know if that was in from a fire or a mineral type of compact it was. Not bad. And there's another little compact there. You can see the sun's out. Got a lot of vertigris on it, a lot of green. It's gotta get chipped off, it won't come off with a brush. And there's another little half a broken compact. That wasn't bad for an hour. Like I said, there was four of us running around hitting that. Yeah. I'm gonna have a little breakfast and uh, get back to the cellar hole. Well, it's been a little while since I dug something, but I finally uh, started orbiting back towards the cellar hole here, and uh, no matter how many times we ran over it, I got something. And there it is, just a uh, broken tom back with a squashed shank. I see a little shine coming through on it. Not too shabby. Well, this cabin site's been destroyed, so Dan and I are going to screw on out of here and see if we can find some place else to hunt. Um, I'm glad somebody left me a little present there. That was very nice, so thank you guys. All right, we've moved on to a second site, and we did some wandering around. We think we've got a cellar hole that might have been pushed around a little bit by uh, equipment. Take a quick look, and we're going to get swinging. So there's a depression up there, there's a rim there, on the other side of that is another depression, so we're not sure if this has been pushed all together with equipment or not. If I dig something, you'll know. Well, I'm meandering around this plowed over cellar hole, a lot of trash, but I got a little iffy 30s down about six inches deep. and. That's part of a uh, buckle. You can see the broken pin spot there. Not broken pin spot. Beautiful. It's got some weight to it even though it's a little piece. I wish I had gotten the whole one. Well, it's been about 20 minutes since that little buckle fragment. Right over there. And it's going to be super low VDI. There's the shank, and there's the button. Super green one. That's neat. I think it's just a plain one. If it's anything else, I'll let you know. Might even be Tom back. Yeah, I think that's what I'm looking at. It's shining up as I rub it. I think I got a Tom back. All right, now I'm sitting in the cellar hole because I'm just wandering about here. I'm only about 10 feet away from that tom back I dug. And I got a super squirrely tone right on the lip of the hole. I'm literally squatting inside the hole here. And I was pretty sure it was junk, but I think I got my first uh, half a coupling. So there's the little hole right there and you can see where the top of the cellar hole flattens out. If I can get it to focus, Little hex shape, uh, half a cuff link. Got a beautiful little sunburst pattern in there. Flip it over. Got a pretty 
pretty sure that's a cufflink. It's a little cuff button, it sure is cute. I love that pattern, I hope that comes out. Well, if you can still hear me through the gale force winds, there's my next hole about two minutes after I dug that uh, hex shaped or octagon shaped cuff button. And it looks like I scored my second piece of buckle for the day. Very interesting. Like I said, I am still at this cellar hole. It's literally right behind me. Well, I am still working these crazy cellar holes. And here is my next find. Tongue off of a uh, shoe buckle. Not bad. I just need to find a whole one today. I got three pieces. I need a whole one. Come on, buckles. Well, the cellar hole hits just keep on coming. I'm not leaving this place until it's empty. This one's only about two inches down, but it's probably because it's on the slope. And there's another tom back for the day. Nice thicky one. A little shank on that. Looks like an early button. I am very, very happy with this machine today. It is kicking ass. Um, I love that double D coil on there. It seems to be, there's not a ton of iron in this hole, but it's doing a good job of picking it out. All right, we are moving on. Spot number two is done. Got a bunch of finds around the cellar hole, nothing spectacular. Um, just nothing around it. Gotta be something. It's been cherry picked already, so. It's only about 1.30, 2 o'clock, so we're going to try another spot, see if we can't fill up the day. Alright boys and girls, here is our final stop of the day, which is going to be number 3. This is the cellar hole here. And right past my detector is the well. And I think we got the barn behind me over here. Now, we've been here actually about... 20 minutes, half an hour. We ain't found shit, so. Let's see what we can do here. Get the rest of the day going. Oh yeah, I got a smile on my face. It's number three for the day. Copper number three, right at the edge of the cellar hole under a bunch of nails. Man, that was a swirly tone. It started out in the 30s and 40s, and by the time I got some nails out of the way, it was in the mid 70s. Let's take a look. So, here's where I'm standing for my intro, basically. And <laughs> right under my feet, under all those roots and a bunch of nails. Oh, baby. Copper number three for the day. Oh, I'm not sure what's going to wind up being. I can't tell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love this machine. It is doing some numbers around these cellar holes today. Let's take a look, see if we can figure out what this is. And that's what I got left for a coin. Uh, it's tough to see, but you got a right facing bust and absolutely nothing on the back. This coin is wiped on the reverse side, but pretty sure that's a King George the first and that's going to put it very early 1700s. I will take a coin like that all day long and half the night. And there's two out of three of the Saskatchewan Standard. I just need me an ox shoe now. Let's go along with my spoon bowl. Who knows, maybe I can do it. Well, I'm still monkeying around this cellar hole. Um, that little tree right there is where I got my King George. And all the way over here. Yeah. The other side of the cellar hole, I got a little button and some, some nails. Pretty squirrely, I wasn't sure it was going to be anything real. There's a hole. Nice. Well, day's getting kind of late. I'm not sure what else I'm going to dig up. It got really slow after that last button. Um, I can't complain. Today was a great day. Um, and I owe it to this baby. Uh, that thing's a monster with that D2 coil on it. Um, I played around cellar holes all day and that last King George, I'll show you when I get this video edited together how many nails um, was above that coin uh, before it started coming in. Um, I'm happy as a clam. Anybody want to buy a White's V3i, send me a message. I'm not going to be using that machine for a while. That's sick. 
Um, tomorrow's looking like a fantastic day. I think we're going to be getting together with a lot of people everyone knows. Uh, we're going to be doing a little hunt up in Massachusetts. And I do believe Mr. Howard Hewitt's going to be in attendance. So, um, stick around. For two weeks anyway. That's the next episode. Uh, thanks for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. And we'll see you guys.